Hello, welcome everyone to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Seratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Seratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed podcast. And today we're going to be talking about um, dads, dad issues, the dad relationship. And th that's because Father's Day is coming up. Um, I think about a week from now, once I publish this and then goes live, it'll be about a week. And um, I think it's a really important topic. And we did the Mother's Day one about last month. And that one, um, I feel there's some overlap for both topics. And we're going to get into some more specifics today with the dad specifically. So uh, this is a good one. Bonnie, how are you today? I'm good. This is a good topic. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with the first question, which is really um, sort of goes back to the Mother's Day episode. So I, I do want to let people know that if you haven't listened to that one yet, I think it's important to listen to that one as well as this one. And because um, there is some overlap in the topics. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, but in that episode, Bonnie, you talked about how the mother or you said generally, I think the parents is they're really like God to us because they created us and mm -hmm. they actually their relationship with um, your relationship with your parents really is like a reflection of your relationship with creation itself, God itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so my question now is then is there a specific um, difference in in respect to that, that that you talked about, about how uh, the relationship with creation, is there a difference, a very specific one for the dad that's different from the mom? If Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, okay, so think about this. You're inside your mother's womb for a period of time, okay? When you're in that womb, you are picking up all her energy. You're picking up her emotions, you're picking up her wounding, her beliefs, all of that has been absorbed. The difference is, is that even though the father is, is co-creating you, co-creating the body, the baby, um, the connection is actually deeper with the mother, okay? And what that does, though, is it creates even more um, angst with the father simply because, you know, we look at our father and there's always that love, you know, initially there's that pure, 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 unconditional love for the father. And there's an emotional attachment to the father that is created through that emotional kind of bonding. Okay. So remember, you're in the womb of the mother for all this time, connecting, bonding. And with the father, there's more of a energetic connection simply because you're not living in his body, okay? You're still picking up because babies, infants, fetuses are still very, very, very psychic. They're picking up energy all the time. So the frequency of the father, if he's living in the home or around, that infant fetus is going to be connecting and feeling and sensing him, okay? Now, if he's not around and he's an absent father, it's going to create more of a, uh, a longing to connect, a longing for that kind of the father love, okay? So in a sense, there's almost more issues in a different way with the father than with the mother, okay? And with the father, when we, you know, we start looking at and feeling into the, the wounding that does occur with, with fathers and their child, children. Um, now, every father's different, of course, as everyone is. Some are more attentive. Some are, you know, they're more um, less emotional, detached, whatever. But no matter what, with the babies, there is that longing for the father, okay? And if you feel into it, Okay, this is kind of cool. If you feel into that longing, that sense of just wanting your dad, wanting your father, you know, wanting his acceptance, wanting him to see you, wanting him to recognize you, wanting him to just love you unconditionally, just as you are. 
when you think about that, and then you think about creation, God, as we, as we call it, there's that same kind of emotional longing. Okay. I have a lot of people that, um, you know, they, they say they can't feel their connection, uh, that they really want to be connected more with God or creator, and they just don't feel it. Okay. So again, we're still looking at an emotional frequency. We're looking at an emotional desire and emotional need, okay? So the thing is, is like with creation, pure and simple, there is nothing but total love, just exact pure unconditional love, that's it. With your own father, it seems to be conditional. It doesn't really mean that that's the truth, but it feels conditional because Maybe the dad isn't expressing, but ultimately in the depth and core of your, the father, there is that love. Now, of course, we get wounded people. We get people that have a lot of trauma and they can't show up as a loving parent, a guiding parent, someone who really does have your best interest. You know, a lot of people are uh, it very immature. <laughs> it's just, it's, you know, it's just a fact. It's not a good, bad, right, wrong. It's just a fact. Okay. And the immaturity comes from having our own wounding and not unraveling our wounding. So we stay stuck at certain ages. So when, when traumas happen at certain ages, you'll see a, be, a person behaving and acting as though they're that age, even though they could be 90 years old. I mean, I experience that all the time. I mean, it's kind of cute in one way, but in another way, it's kind of sad because they've been stuck all their lives at a certain age. So the connection with the father definitely hits more like a stronger sense of the feeling with God because people it's the unknown. Okay. It's like, there's nothing tangible. You can't go, Oh, here's God. And yet everything is that, but still we we have this belief or image or perception that God is like a human being, <laughs> which is simply not true. And we have this misperception that God has emotions. Emotions are judging, aren't they? Emotions judge, condemn. Okay, we if all this frequency and these misperceptions around God having emotions simply isn't true. Con con God is consciousness, awareness. It doesn't have an agenda. It doesn't have any wants or needs. Okay, and it's the unknowable. So we have this whole thing with our fathers. It's like on some level he's unknowable. You know, we want long for daddy's attention, love, or whatever. He's an absent dad or a, a malicious dad or hurtful, hateful dad, whatever. We're still having that longing to connect. So it's that same kind of frequency with our father as it is with what people call the father or God or creator, the all that is. And again, you can't know your father completely, nor can you know God. But there's something in that whole connection with our parents, with both mother, father. We just want their attention. We want their love, acceptance. We want to be acknowledged. We just really and truly want them to love us just as we are, not making fault, finding, you know, reasons why we're not good enough or whatever, but that longing and desires inside of every human being just to be loved. So we've got these belief systems that creator is the all almighty. And therefore, if that doesn't love us, you know, then we're doomed seriously doomed. Okay. So again, it's just that whole misperception of what we think God is. But again, our connection with our parents truly reflects our connection with creator. Okay. If we grew up and we felt loved and supported and seen and acknowledged and, you know, all those wonderful things that we all long for, you know, where people aren't abusive or they don't say hurtful things or, you know, anything that's going to traumatize us, then our connection with creation is going to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more open. But again, there's a, there's a feeling inside of all humans. And that feeling is a sense of loneliness. Okay. That loneliness is that place within our subconscious down. It's actually down in the belly, that second chakra area. And that area even if we really go deep, this is where we will feel and find all the frequencies, the traumas, the misperceptions, the feelings 
like we're just not loved or we're not enough or we don't belong. And this is something that resides in everyone. Most people cannot handle just resting or sitting or relaxing into the, that very deep, deep place in the belly because that's where all the angst is. That's where all that energy is where we feel like we're disconnected or we're feeling we're not enough or we're not loved. So all of those misperceptions are in that part of our body. So we're constantly doing things, you know what I mean? It's like, we'll, we'll, we'll push ourselves to the edge. Well, I call them the red, red liners. That's people who do extreme things to get to feel stuff. And then there's people that are, you know, that aren't those red liners, but they're still, uh, they can't land in the belly because it's too uncomfortable. There's a, the loneliness in there is incredible. Okay. Because we're not feeling bonded with our parents. We're not feeling bonded, you know, with what we call God. And there's that longing to be bonded, to be connected. So that trauma is really intense and, you know, we'll do anything. We'll, we'll go eat sugar. I'm not joking. Okay. It's that feeling where, okay, uh, uh, getting a little uncomfortable here. I think I need to go do something. Oh, I'll go wash the dishes or I'll do laundry or I'll, I'll go for a ride or I'll go for a walk. I'll do anything to avoid landing deep inside. Okay. Landing in that belly area because that's where the trauma, the vibrational frequency is that we are very uncomfortable with. Okay. So the father is the more less um, attainable or accessible, so to speak, than the mother, simply because, again, you were in the womb of mother, okay? You were not in the womb of father. So you actually have a little bit of a deeper connection with the mother, even though that can be traumatized, and even though the mother can be wacko or, you know, something really disturbed about her, or she could be like a loving, gentle mom, doesn't matter, whatever that is, you're holding that energy. But at the same time, you still have a different bond with the mother than you do with the father. And it really does have to do with the time spent inside the body of your mother. So Bonnie, it seems like in the shop at spiritualacceleration.com, you actually have more dad clearings than mom clearings, at least from what I could tell. Hmm. And there's two specific ones for the dad that I really want to ask you about. And I guess you did actually talk a little bit about this already, but if you could go deeper or not, that's fine. But the two clearings I'm talking about, one is called absent father hmm. and the other is called hero dad. Uh-huh. And so I, I was, I noticed that you have these, but like for the mom ones, you don't really have kind of the specific ones. So I was wondering, like, are these particular issues, are those some of the most common daddy issues that people have generally? And what are some of the more most common ones? Mm. Well, the absent dad is pretty common simply because oftentimes families don't stay together. So the father is gone. And when the father is there, this is a huge one. He's emotionally unavailable meaning he's not, even though he's physically there, he's not really there for the children, for the child. I'm not saying that's across the board true for everyone. It's just as far as like, we're talking numbers, that's one of the big numbers. Absent fathers, whether they're in the home or not, that creates a major angst in the body, okay? There's that longing, they're wanting their dad, you know, waiting for dad, hoping for dad, and it still all comes back down to loving your dad. So that's really the big one. The hero dad is, there's a few things with that. You know, there's a few things where we idolize the dad because he is absent. Oftentimes when dad goes away or we don't see him very often, we begin to create, um, you know, like like some kind of an imaginary father, what, who, how we feel about him, how we think of him. Like even in my own world, uh, my dad was left when I was young, very young. And there was always that longing just to have my dad be connected. So again, of course, he became the, the hero. You know what I mean? Like my mom was the bad one. My dad's the good one. So he, I idolized him, put him on a pedestal, that kind of thing. Um, and then to sometimes dads really are heroes, you know, it's like, but then so can moms be heroes. So I don't remember exactly what the clearing was about, but it has to do with, you know, that whole place where 
or he, even if he's alive or not alive, there's still that place where we are idolizing or wanting or longing for more than what we are receiving. But it's that emotional feeling where it, and it's true for anything or anyone when we, when we're longing for someone, Oh, and it's just like this. I, I just remembered it, it's like this, you know, you have a relationship and it's all yucky and you in, you split up and then all you remember is the good stuff or you even make stuff where it wasn't good or whatever, but you'll start to remember or think about it in a different way rather than the way it actually truly was. Okay. So we do that with our dad, you know, we make him the hero and it's not a bad thing. It's just that, you know, we want to be clear. We want to open the heart and just love him in all aspects of who he is, you know, just exactly as he is. We just want to love our dad and be loved by our dad so that we can accept him and all his faults because there is no perfect father. There never will be. And it's impossible to, you know, for anyone to live up to that kind of perfection. So again, it's really about, let's just open the heart and love, love one another just as we are, you know, without like, oh, you gotta be this way or you have to do this or you have to act this way in order for me to love you. No, no, all we really want even the father, even our dads, they just want to be loved unconditionally. The whole, everyone just wants to be loved unconditionally. So the interaction with our fathers and our mothers, if you, you know, when you pay attention, you'll just notice all this emotion that rises up, you know, it's like thinking about holidays or thinking about, you know, getting together. Some people it's like wonderful, great. Other people it's like, oh, it's like torture. Okay. Again, if you open your heart and just love them exactly as they are, stop trying to no, stop finding fault, stop, or actually wake up to what you're really wanting. And that is, I want my mommy and my daddy to love me. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Give it up because they do in their own way. They're doing the best that they can, but that's all about loving us, loving them. Okay. Cause who do we feel? Who are we feeling in our body? Who are we living with? We're living with our own selves. If we open our hearts to love our parents, I promise you, your connection with creation, all that is, is also going to open up and you're going to feel even more love, more joy, more happiness, more peace, because you're really connecting to the absolute truth of who we all are, which is love in the core of our being. And creation is that pure love pure love. That's it. So again, you know, it's like, you want to know, you want, you want to love, you want to know love, you want to know creation, you want to open your heart to creation. Well, start with mom and dad. Start right there. I was thinking, well, what about, um, are you specifically talking about the biological dad? Because there's some households that they don't have a dad, uh, they have an adopted father, or they maybe right. even have two dads or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So and it can be true for either way. Some people are adopted. Some people are taken from their mother immediately, you know, from birth. Okay. And, and put into another home or maybe, you know, foster home or adopted. So they never see their other, their actual birth parents. Some people never even know who their birth father is. Okay. But here's the thing. You as a little being know exactly who they are because it's a soul recognition. It's a soul connection. Okay. I'm going to tell you a quick little story. This is way back when I had my practice in Auburn, California. This was back in the 80s. And I had a, 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 a man come in. He was a minister, okay? And he was adopted. And so I asked him, do you ever feel any, anything with you know, being adopted? How's that feel for you? And he goes, oh, no problem. I love my family. This is my family. I don't even know the difference. So I said, oh, okay. So back then I was using hip, hypnotherapy um, as a, as a tool to help people. Okay. And so I took him back, took him right into the womb, pulled him right out into the birth. The moment he was taken away from his mother, the man broke down sobbing. Okay. So what I'm saying is you don't know what's in your subconscious. All you know is what's in your conscious mind, but I can tell you right here, right now, your little being, you, who you are, was in the womb of that mother and the father, even if he was a one time, you know, one nighter, and that's all he did was get impregnate the mother, there is still that frequency connection. We are still longing for that 
connection, that deep connection that only comes with the actual birth parents. And I know some people are going to say, oh, well, I was adopted. I love my mother and father. That I, hands down, how can you say such a thing? Well, let's get into your subconscious and find out. Just like that minister, what happened to him? He truly believed with every fabric of his being that he had no issue with being adopted at all. Okay. So, you know, it comes from the subconscious, but basically even growing up in, let's just say you get adopted and the parents love you, you are bonding with them and you are looking for that kind of connections. It's the same. And, you know, it's like sometimes people find out they were adopted. Some people never, never know that, but no matter what, the feelings and the longing and, and the issues are still going to be the same. Okay. But bottom line is the, the paternal and maternal people, parents, that's where your little being, where your psyche, where your subconscious, where your knowing is still connected to them. So it does create a lot of angst and it does create a lot of emotional frequencies for people, even if they never know they're adopted. Okay. Sometimes they just feel like, hmm. I just, there's just something I'm just feeling. Something's not quite right. I don't feel like I really belong here, you know? So, I mean, there can be all kinds of different things, but again, it's still about your subconscious. What's, what's really going on in the subconscious? You can't know that consciously because of course the conscious mind will never know the unconscious mind and our unconscious is what dictates our whole entire reality. So, you know, it doesn't matter whether we're adopted or not. The bond that we're still longing for, hoping for, wanting is still with those mat mat the maternal, paternal parents. So my next question, Bonnie, is uh, slightly different. It's actually, I, I want to um, talk about kind of soul connections more specifically, oh. maybe around past lives. And mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. I want to bring this up because I think it's important if people are listening to this and they maybe had a really horrible relationship with their dad, maybe he was really abusive or whatever, they may not um, be open yeah. to what you're talking about, just loving your parents, because that's a very hard thing if people have been really traumatized by their parents. And yeah. so I want to bring up this topic, which you talk about quite a lot, which is how um, oftentimes when we're in these in really intense relationships with people, we've actually had many, many lifetimes with them playing different roles. And we make agreements and contracts with these soul, you call them soul family. Mm -hmm. And um, so could you talk about, I guess, that aspect of the relationship with the dad and how I'm assuming that if you have a father, you have a very intense uh, soul family type relationship with them generally. Is that correct? And can you talk about that? Because I think that knowing about this could really open people's up that they see like the bigger picture aspect of things and how relationships are, it could mm -hmm. really open them up to loving and to being able to heal any dad issues. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <clears throat> with soul family, I mean, we all have soul family, okay? And it's kind of cool because even, even sometimes we'll come across a soul, a member of our soul family somewhere obscure or whatever. I've, I've been at an airport, sat down next to somebody, an immediate connection, talking, talking. And then we even stayed connected for a while, even though we live really, really far away or walking down or whatever. You know, you meet somebody just for a moment. You can feel this connection. OK, so what's happening is there's soul recognition. But what's also happening is we do have these mega soul families and we literally uh, reincarnate with the with the soul family. The main players in our soul family dance are people like siblings, mothers, fathers, relationship. You know what I mean? Intimate relationships. And um, sometimes it can be external, like meaning like a boss or something. But we have these really potent, powerful experiences where we are literally playing out um, the dance with one another with the, with the intention to unravel any kind of wounding. And this is where the, the true energy of the soul connection really comes to play. So for example, for me growing up, we were raised by my grandmother. Okay. So my grandmother, remember, it's just the acting out of the light in the life. Okay. So 
Yeah, uh, and the gra- with my grandmother, seemingly she really disliked me. So I was getting punished quite often. Uh, lots of spankings with razor straps, with uh, belts, with switches off trees for any reason whatsoever. It didn't take anything for that to happen. So I felt traumatized and severely damaged, emotionally damaged from what occurred with my grandmother. So years, years later, going forward in time, my grandmother died. Uh, probably when I was in my 20s, late 20s, 30s, somewhere in there. And during and doing my own healing work, which began to happen at, at that time, probably, yeah, my 30s, that's when I discovered that my grandmother at a soul level, the love is so strong, so profound that there's a willingness to hold that position, hold that polarity, be the violator, be the perpetrator, be the the traumatizer with the intention to activate that core wound so that it can come to the surface and be healed. So we don't have to keep living that wounding over and over and over, which is what we all do. Okay. So usually those that love us most, when you go into the etheric realms on the astral planes and we're connecting with the souls at that level, it's really very profound love that we're willing to hold that. Okay. So that's in some ways, that's kind of cool. So I actually really saw clearly the profound love that was coming from the soul of my grandmother and the willingness to hold that and be violent or vicious or uh, uh, damaging to me. Okay. So again, we playing out. So you know, in other lifetimes, we could be brothers and sisters, we could be lovers, we could be husbands, wives, we could be, um, you know, aunts, uncles, grandparents, whatever, but there's that kind of bonding, there's a recognition and knowing of one another. And even it doesn't even matter how evolved we are, like, for example, in my family, um, my family wasn't highly, very evolved consciously, and yet my mother's three children, all three of us are extremely sensitive, and have been pursuing consciousness and awareness. And, you know, there's an evol- a souls of evolving that's happened because of that. But at the same time, it's really about the, the dance of the souls that they come together. But it, the intention is always this, to wake up, to end our suffering, to come out of these misperceptions that we're not loved, we're not enough, we're not worthy, we're not wanted, we don't belong. And all the ways in which those beliefs got anchored in, it's always the dance is to unravel and clear, make visible, release and wake up to the truth that we all are absolutely pure love and light in the very core of our being. And the desire to express ourselves fully in that, meaning no more feeling inhibited, no more blocked. You just, you're, there's nothing stopping us from just being, you know, it's like that mind thoughts, our own emotions, our own fears, all of that is what inhibits us. But when we're no longer blocked in those ways, we're free. And then it's like, we're here, we're sharing us, we're sharing what I call the gift of us, the gift of you. You're sharing yourself purely, freely, openly with everyone, you know, it's like no more holding back, no more capitulation, no more uh, feeling afraid. It's like, hey, you know, here I am. And this is this is who I am with all our faults and all our frailties and misperceptions, all of it. So the soul dance, you know, between the, the, the with our soul family, it's always still the same. It's really always about waking up, waking up. But again, those really intense experiences are going to be with your main, the main, like it'd be almost like in a soul, all your soul family. Let's just say you got well over a thousand members of your soul family where you're going to have a, you know, like a, not even a handful, but maybe a little more than a handful of people that you're going to keep doing big stuff with, you know, the really deep stuff. You might change it out here and there, but yeah, we definitely have that, you know, the soul family that we're doing all these soul dances with. Well, I have a question, Bonnie, about how effective it is to do maybe like a process where you go into past lives to connect with your dad in different lifetimes because you were talking about the soul family thing and you actually do something like that in the hero dad um, one because I listened to that the other day I don't have a hero dad but I listened to the clearing anyway (laughs) and you did a process of taking people back to past lives to connect with uh, the father in a different life would you recommend something like that for people if they want to unravel 
of their dad issues? Okay. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. I mean, because you're going to have different experiences and different lifetimes, but the key is you want it with the same soul and the same soul isn't always going to be the father. Okay. So you've had, you may have had several souls playing out dad issues or playing out dad roles, but ultimately since it's really about us and it's about us opening our heart, going back and experiencing past incarnations with various lifetimes where there's all kinds of different experiences with dad and if you're really understanding and, and, and knowing that it's really about opening your heart and the recognition that, you know, we're all, we're all playing out and acting out with the intention of helping one another to wake up, then if you go back with that awareness, that knowing, if you can just keep opening your heart to all those experiences, no matter what they were, I mean, I, I, there's things dropping in as it's like, and you're, this is you, because I'm, you know what I mean? It's like you and I are together. And so things are dropping in. I'm seeing past lives where you are literally, by, with the father, literally sold for, you know, like a slave, you know? So there was different reasons, you know, in one life, it's like the father literally sold you, okay? How are you going to feel about that? What's that going to activate inside, okay? But again, if we understand what we're really doing here, what life is really about, it's about the waking up of the soul and to stop taking things personally and to heal the wounding that we've collected from thousands of lifetimes or for some people, hundreds of lifetimes. You know, it's like you start realizing, understanding what this soul dance is all about. You know, we're all going to the same place. We all want the same thing and we're all on different paths and down, you know, wherever we are on our path, on our journey is different for everyone, but ultimately it's still all the same. We're all going to the same place. We want to go back home, back home into the oneness, creation itself, end our suffering. <laughs> so if we wake up to that and realize that, then we can go back in these past lives. We can do these regressions and go back and unravel the hurt or the pain or the loss or whatever happened with the fathers. I mean, Rarely are you going to find a lifetime where dad was perfect and you had a perfect life. <laughs> there's no point in that, really, because where there's not growth other than maybe, OK, I know what it feels like to have my heart open and to feel love. So you have that as a reference. But, you know, we're really unraveling all the misperceptions. I mean, that's what it's really about is all these beliefs and misperceptions and conclusions that we've carried forward from all our past lives. So, again. It can be very potent, powerful, but don't go in thinking you're a victim. Go in thinking, all right, I want to know what kind of experiences I've had with, with the father and where am I still holding resentments? Where am I still holding fear? Where am I still believing I'm not enough or I'm not loved? Because that, again, is once again, our connection to the all that is. Bonnie, could you share about your own dad? Is that okay? Are you feeling comfortable talking about your dad? Yeah, my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I, okay. So for me, um, growing up, my dad was, you know, for me, when I, as a little, I really, really loved my dad. Okay. Cause I remember being really young and seeing him and he, I, he, I idolized him. He was my idol. I just love my daddy. Okay. And then when he was gone, then it was just my mother, but then she left as well. So again, we were raised by grand, grandmother, but my dad, I mean, I grew up with, with lots of hurt, lots of like really longing and wanting my dad. And eventually he did remarry and he did have another family that, that, were, that were, they weren't his biological kids, but they were around our age. And occasionally we got to go over and hang out with our dad. And, and you know, it wasn't real often, but it was occasional. And I just remember those times were like sacred to me. You know, it's like, I remember one time we went to the beach. My dad let me wear his watch. I was just like, oh my God, my dad's watch, man. I was just like in heaven. And then I dropped it and got sand on it and he took it away and I was shattered, shattered. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, he dad, he actually died when I was 16. And because I didn't have this awareness, because I didn't know anything, I'm just a kid. I cried for my dad almost every single night of my life for like 10 years, wanting him back, missing my dad, longing for my dad, the same old story over and over. You know, I did that because I 
that was what I was feeling. I didn't understand that, oh, you got to drop in underneath all of that and really go into these really deeper places to unravel these places of wounding. But basically, my dad um, was an absent father. Uh, we rarely saw him. In fact, when I was got, when I became like young, you know, like maybe 12, 13, somewhere in that time period, um, we never saw him, you know, years ago by, I never see my dad, never hear from him. Okay. So of course, what is that? What does that anchor into me? Okay. On an unconscious level. Oh, he doesn't want me. I'm not important. I don't matter. I'm not enough. I'm not loved. You know, all those misperceptions and rather than recognizing, oh, my dad had his own reasons why he didn't come around because it hurt too much. You know, it was very painful for him because he did still love my mother. Okay. So there's all these things that we don't know as children until sometimes later we have realizations or things are brought to our awareness and we start understanding things a little differently. But as a child growing up, all that meant for me was dad's gone, never see him. It's all about me. I'm the reason why, you know, so we take it all personal. But um, with my dad, you know, it's like, <laughs> Cynthia, I'm just remembering when I was doing, remember, I think I told you when I was, when I remember I got scammed and I was driving, when I was, went to California on my drive back home, these light, this light being presented and my mom and dad clear as day presented. And this is where a lot of healing happened for me personally on that drive home. I was being shown different things. I was being shown keeping my heart open and loving my parents no matter what. And then to actually feel into that and let that love just keep coming up. And then also um, that the recognition that that's how deeply and profoundly they both love me. It was just that pure love. And, you know, I had some pretty big openings and shifts happening from that occurrence. So, you know, even, you know, like, look, that's like years and years later, I'm still having unraveling with my, mo my mother and my father. but again, they're God. Okay. So, but it was awesome, profound. And now it's like, it's just interesting because I used to have a really hard time, even knowing everything I know, Cynthia, people, someone would die. And I just, it was like, it crushed me. I could hardly stand it. Okay. It was that loss, that feeling of they're gone forever. I'll never, never see again. And yet that journey on the way home, my heart opened in a different way. And the love that I experienced shifted and changed me. And now I don't have that same kind of feeling with death. So I can think about my dog. Remember my dog, when she died, I was like, I couldn't even look at her. Couldn't see her picture. Now I can. Now I can walk by, look at her picture and, and even, you know, just feel, feel this, how much fun she was, and how much I enjoyed her. Okay. I couldn't do that before. So it was profound, a major shift, major shift in my heart and heart opening. And it's all about love. And it's all about just keep that heart open, loving our parents, no matter what, because they are our God. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for sharing um, everything you did with us today. And you do have an upcoming group energy clearing on June 9th. And that's called Loving Dad on Father's Day. And it's at 1230 p.m. Eastern time. It will be live. And of course, um, for those listening, if you can't make it to that time, or if you're listening to this after that date, you could still buy it and watch the replay and it's just as effective. Mm -hmm. So there's also many, many dad clearings on in the shop that you did over the years, throughout the years. So I'll be leaving a link for all of those in the description below. And is there anything you'd like to add, Bonnie, before we close off? Yeah, so that particular clearing, it really is about loving your dad. So. If you're not loving your dad, if you're feeling resistance or dislike him or fear him or whatever you got running, this would be the clearing to come to because this is what I, I want to dig in deep and unravel all the pain and hurt or whatever is in there that keeps you from loving your dad. Because remember, loving your dad is a reflection of your connection with creation itself. And if this one is anything like the mother one that you did last month, loving your mom on Mother's Day. That to me, for me personally, was the uh, most powerful mom one that mm. um, you have in the shop for me. And that mm -hmm. might not be the case for everybody, but right, it was right. just, it was a yeah. different, it was, um, you did something, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it really shifted a lot that I needed. Mm -hmm. So all of the, nice. even though we have a lot of the group clearings that seem to be the same, there's a lot of differences in them. So I just yeah, recommend there's... for people to get, yeah. get them all if you can, because they 
they will all just shift you in different ways. And right. you will have accelerators too in this one. And they are also doing different things as well. So mm-hmm. every clearing mm-hmm. will, will be different in that respect as well. So, right. all right. Well, um, thank you everybody for watching. Please like the video, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what you think. And if you're listening on Apple, leave us a review, Consciousness Unleashed podcast. And once again, you can find everything that Bonnie does at spiritualacceleration.com. Check us out. And thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye. All righty.